Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Unity of Gainesville, and a special welcome to all of you who may be joining us virtually, as well as the nice folks who are right here in the sanctuary. We're so glad to have everyone with us this morning. I'm Don Necco. I'll be here at the keyboard. We have our own Reverend Danny Spears, who will be speaking this morning. And one of the things that came to my mind this morning is that we are entering Thanksgiving week. And it's often been said that gratitude is like a magnet in the universe. And we have so much to be grateful for. So let's get started with Karen Drucker's I Am So Blessed. So here's your intro, and why don't you stand, please? I am so blessed, I am so blessed, I am so grateful for all that I am. I am so blessed, I am so blessed, I am so grateful, I am so blessed. I am so blessed, I am so blessed, I am so grateful for all that I am. I am so blessed, I am so blessed, I am so grateful, I am so blessed, I am so blessed, I am so blessed. I am so grateful for all that I am. I am so blessed. I am so blessed. I am so grateful. I am so blessed. I am so grateful. I am so blessed. I am so grateful. I am. Good morning, and isn't it such a wonderful day to feel that place of thanksgiving, a place of gratitude. I'm LaVon Hoagland, uh, one of the prayer chaplains. We have Anne and Sherry with us here this morning also. Um, we're really glad to be here and supporting the congregation and being here with you. Our daily word for today is grateful. And the affirmation, I am wonderfully blessed and so grateful. Would you join me in that affirmation, please? I am wonderfully blessed and so grateful. Today, I am grateful to reap the bountiful harvest of love and joy. And I give thanks for my many blessings, especially for the love of God in all the wondrous ways in which that love manifests. I am grateful for my family and friends, those who give my life meaning and depth. I am grateful for the roof over my head and for the comfort of warmth and security. I am grateful for the food I have to eat, food that nourishes me and keeps me healthy. Mostly, I am grateful for the presence of God in my life and the awareness that God is not only around me, God is within me. For my divinity, I give thanks, prosperity, peace, and joy, the sweetest blessings I could ever want. From Psalms 104, enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him, bless his name. Our prayer chaplains 
and our prayer team are very happy to pray with you. Please leave your prayer request, a phone message on the church at the church office or place your request in our prayer box. You may also reach out to Silent Unity, either by calling or by having the YouPray app on your phone, where your request will be held in prayer for 30 days. Following the church service, any prayer chaplain wearing a prayer stole will be happy to pray with you individually. And we have dedicated this space over to your right for that. So even in the midst of getting ready for potluck, if you want to have prayer, please seek it out. Please join me now in praying for those who have requested prayer and those you, you wish to place in this sacred prayer space. You may speak their names now. All prayers, whether spoken or unspoken, are known by the divine. As we release these heartfelt requests, we know and affirm that all is in divine order. And we say, thank you, God. Amen. Good morning. Right now, I get to do one of my favorite things to do as the spiritual leader of Unity of Gainesville, and that is to receive someone into membership. So, uh, I, uh, before I call her up, I just want to uh, introduce her a bit. Uh, Sabine Sharpton has been attending uh, our church for you know some time now this during this year and she's one of those quiet people she does a lot of stuff behind the scenes if you've looked out at the web and how nice all that to one side looks and all how all that overgrowth is gone that's Sabine and she helps with the yard in other ways and she's helped with uh I've heard she's helped out with fellowship before. She's been in our classes. Uh, she's just been a very quiet, but a very active part of our community. So I would like to call Sabine Sharpton up at the moment. Let's give her a hand. So Sabine, we have the certificate of membership for you, suitable for framing. And we have your uh, membership packet. Uh, also forgot to mention that you know how we are always asking for help in the media booth all the time we're asking for help in the media booth Sabine has expressed interest in the media booth if you could see the smile if she doesn't trust me you cannot break it if you could see the smiles on Cindy and Marlon's faces right now all right so we want to rub our hands together get that energy going there you go let's hold extend those hands as you're comfortable we're going to offer you a blessing sabine we love you we bless you we appreciate you and we behold the christ in you amen and you can have a seat now thank you welcome So continuing our theme of gratitude and thankfulness, let's go into now the thank you song. And here's your intro. <laughs> Your 
love is sweet and true. I feel your peace embrace me. I'm in the light with you. Thank you, blessed spirit, for your grace in my life. I know your wisdom guides me. I feel your joy inside. I know you walk beside me. Your love is sweet and true. I feel your peace embrace me. I'm in the light with you. I'm in the light with you. I'm in the light with you. Okay, thank you, Don. Always a pleasure to have you with us. And it's always a pleasure to have everyone here in the sanctuary. Or if you are joining us from Virtual World, we welcome you as well. You know, before I get started today, if you've gone through the front, have you seen the food? Have you smelled the food? Isn't that wonderful? I mean, you know, sometimes you know, for years, any church where I've been a minister, you know, we haven't really been a traditional, what you call Christian community. We're not traditional at all. And, you know, people will look at us and say, well, you're not a real church. And when they say that, I point to our potlucks and say, really? <laughs> How can you say we're not a real church? Can you spell that? There you go. Thank you for everyone uh, who was able to help out with the uh, potluck. And... Al. Okay. And for uh, every, you know, everyone that is here today, uh, we invite you to stay. You know, sometimes folks will say, oh, I couldn't bring anything or I forgot or whatever. Don't worry about that. There is more than enough to go around, hang out, and have some wonderful food with us. With that, I'm going to get started. I'm going to talk about age. <laughs> yeah. Age is a funny thing, isn't it? <laughs> Sometimes, <laughs> you know, when we weren't old enough to go to school, a lot of us wanted nothing more than to go to big kid school, right? Okay, before I get going, can you turn me up? Da, 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 da. Testing, one, two, three, is that better? I'm getting nods. Okay, let's try that again. So when we weren't old enough to go to school, most of us, or a lot of us, wanted to go to big kid school, right? We wanted to be older. And if we went to kindergarten, it wasn't long before we wanted to go to real big kid school. And then we made it to middle school. And by the time we made it to middle school, we started suspecting that our parents may be a bit clueless, but we had it all figured out. And by the time we reached our teenage years, and especially after we got our driver's license, we were sure we had life figured out and our parents were definitely clueless. And then it was 21. Ah, 21. And our first taste of alcohol for some of us. Okay, our first legal taste of alcohol. You know, and I'll tell it myself here, I bought a fake ID when I was 18. And do you know when I started getting carded? Two weeks after I turned 21. And it was pretty funny, though, to see the look on the doorman's face at one of my favorite hangouts because I handed him my driver's license and he looked at me and said, what? He looked at the age, he said, but you've been coming here for the last... And then he just looked at me and he smiled and said, well... Happy birthday. Now, for guys, there is a little-known important birthday, at least for a lot of us, and that's 25. And why is that? 
because for a lot of guys, when you turn 25, your car insurance drops. And mine dropped by almost 50%. Happy birthday to me. But after that, our attitude toward age begins to shift a little bit, doesn't it? You know, we've all heard the jokes about turning 30 and 40 and 50 and so forth. And most of us accept them with grace. Ah, but wouldn't we much better if we prefer teasing other people when they reach those milestones, right? You know, we have a lot of birthdays here, you know, in November, and Mr. Cletus is turning 90 at Thanksgiving or the day after. So make sure you say happy birthday. 90. I'm not even going to go there. Yes. Once we hit a certain age, a lot of folks like to do their best impersonation of that old share song, If I Could Turn Back Time. New clothes. New hairstyle for those who can grow hair, that is. Yeah, some folks even, you know, have plastic surgery, right? Yeah, some people, as they age, begin to take up extreme sports. You might see that on Facebook, all in an attempt to prove that they still have it, whatever it is or was. Now, personally, I love the old jokes that, you know, I'm at that age where I finally got it all together. Now, if I could just remember where I put it. Yeah. As we age, a lot of us tend to reminisce about the good old days, too, don't we? Because, you know, every, everything was better back in the good old days. Yeah. Try selling that to African Americans or Native Americans, women, Jewish folks, queer folks, just to name a few groups. Yeah, I guess, you know, the good old days or how good they were depends on who you are, right? And how you grew up. And I'm not trying to be a big old Debbie Downer here either. I don't want to rip on anyone's happy memories. And I'm definitely not saying it is wrong to reminisce about the good old days. You know, heck, Richard and I are going to Kentucky next week to visit my family for Thanksgiving. Trust me, there will be reminiscing. Now, some of those stories will be the same stories we've heard since Jesus walked the planet. But at my family, I don't know about yours, at my family, that's the only way we remember those stories is to keep repeating them. On the other hand, there are people who don't have a very good opinion of the past. Maybe they had a challenging past or maybe they just don't focus on it. They say, forget the past. The past is gone. We can't change the past. No, nope, the future, the future is where it's at. And I understand that, especially if you had a rough past. At the same time, have you ever noticed how much of our future-oriented thinking is very focused on either or? For example, you know, if we elect so-and-so, this country's going to go to hell. Oh, but if we elect so-and-so, Everything is going to be just fine. Or, you know what? It's too late. We've gone too far. Nothing matters. There's no hope. Or, oh, no, no. All we have to do is think nice and pleasant and positive thoughts, and everything is going to be just fine. So which is it? You know, that is, when it comes to the topics of dealing with our past and or our futures, as people of faith, what do we do? Well, many of us look to our holy writings when we address certain matters, right? Several matters. So why not this one? Okay. In this case, however, the Bible is, well, a bit all over the place. First, we're going to look at the past. 
in the Old Testament, we have verses like Isaiah chapter 43, verse 18. Forget the past. Don't dwell on the former things. From the New Testament, Paul in Philippians chapter 3, verse 13 says, but one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and striving for what lies ahead. And then there's Jesus. Jesus says in the Gospel of Luke, who is quoted as saying, no one who puts a hand to the plow and looks back is fit for service in the kingdom of God. Dang, Jesus. That's a little harsh. At the same time, we have at least 15 verses in the Old Testament, and you're going to be grateful because I'm not going to quote them. But we've got 15 verses in the Old Testament telling the Israelites to remember God's deliverance and to remember their time in Egypt. Remember, remember, remember. In the New Testament book of Hebrews, we read, remember the former days when after being enlightened you endured a great conflict of suffering when it comes to the future in the book of jeremiah we hear for i know the plans i have for you declares the lord plans to prosper you and not to harm you plans to give you hope and a future we also have several biblical prophecies. We've all heard about the prophecies, right? Some of those prophecies are hopeful. Others, not so much. And in the book of Revelation, we have some prophecies which read like they come straight out of some of those cheesy sci-fi movies that I love so much. So what is it? Forget? Remember? Past? future. Actually, I think it's both and. That is, there is a time to remember the past and to honor it. For example, did you know this month, 21 years ago, I think it's November 18th, 21 years ago, the community of Unity of Gainesville opened this campus where we are sitting today. Uh, how many people sitting here were part of that group are still here? One, two, three, four, five, a whole bunch of, and I'm sure uh, if there, I know if Kay Hambrick is watching from home, she was probably part of that group. Let's give these folks a hand, okay? You know, I want to thank, I want to thank y'all for having the vision for establishing a positive and practical spiritual community of faith in Hall County because that is brave, I will tell you that. And there's wisdom in learning from our past mistakes. Now, I know some traditions say there are no mistakes, there are only lessons. But there is, you know, there is wisdom in learning from our past. You know, what's that old saying? Those who do not learn from the lessons of the past are bound to repeat them. And how many of us here have repeated a few life lessons? Yeah, I have. Yep. But at the same time, folks, we can't stay in the past. We can't live there. Romanticizing the beautiful parts of our past too much means that we miss the opportunities and blessings in our midst today. Continuing to think too much about the more challenging times in our past isn't beneficial either. Eckhart Tolle says guilt, resentment, grievances, sadness, bitterness, and all forms of non-forgiveness are caused by too much past and not enough presence. Guilt, resentment, Regret, grievances, sadness, bitterness, and all forms of non-forgiveness are caused by too much past and not enough presence. Like fo focusing too much on the past, trying to live in the future has its challenges as well. Some folks point to that passage in Jeremiah 
I mentioned earlier, and they say things like, well, see, God has a plan. God has a plan to take care of our future, and it's one of hope and peace and love and light. So all we have to do is just sit back, mind our P's and Q's, and wait for all that to unfold. Others live in a more bleak vision of the future. To that, Eckhart Tolle says, unease, anxiety, tension, stress, worry, all forms of fear are caused by too much future and not enough presence. Unease, anxiety, tension, stress, worry, all forms of fear are caused by too much future and not enough presence. So if we think about it, it's true that we have no power to change the past. What is done is done. And we have yet to experience the future. Our real power, therefore, I believe, is in the now. After all, if we think about it, isn't now, this moment, all that we have? Embracing the power of now is also biblical. From the wisdom of Ecclesiastes, chapter 8, 15, we read, so I commend the enjoyment of life because there is nothing better under the sun than to eat and drink and be glad. Then joy will accompany them in their toil all the days of the life that God has given under the sun. In the Gospels, a lot of us know that Jesus said, worry about the future is useless. Jesus said to focus on today. Focus on the challenges of today. And today's contemporary witness, Eckhart Tolle, said, life is now. There was never a time when your life was not now, nor will there ever be. Life is now. So what exactly is happening now? Well, remember Isaiah 43, 18 that I mentioned earlier. You know that verse about forget the past and don't dwell on the former things? Very next verse, verse 19 says, I am doing a new thing. Do you not perceive it? Not I will do a new thing, but I am doing a new thing. See, that's very present tense. And the tense of that is also continuous in the Hebrew. Eckhart might even say it is very presence tense and continuous. Now, some people read this verse and they will say, well, you know, that's about an outer God. An outer God is doing a new thing for us or will do a new thing for us. Yet what do we teach in unity? We teach that we, each and every one of us here, each and every one of us, all of us, even those people, as I say, who work our last available nerve, all of us are expressions of that great and glorious I am. Because God is, I am. Because God is, you are. Because God is, we are. So with that thought in mind, what new thing are you doing? What new thing am I doing? What new thing are we doing? What are we manifesting? You know, we have the power, you know. We have this power. Remember, as we teach in New Thought and Unity, thoughts held in mind produce after their kind. And John Milton reminds us, the mind is its own place and in itself can make a heaven of hell or a hell of heaven. 
The mind is its own place and it itself can make a heaven of hell or a hell of heaven. So again, I ask us, what are we creating? What new things are we doing? So in closing, here is my challenge for all of us today. Yes, honor and learn from the past. Have faith in a hope-filled, prosperous, and peaceful future. Do not, however, attempt to live in either place. Live and create in the present, in the now. Let's take some time. Let's just stop for a moment to look around and to give thanks for all that is beautiful, holy, and just. Because you know what, folks? It's out there. If we have ears to hear it, and if we have eyes to see it. And finally, in the places where we see hell, let's use our power of now to create heaven. Happy Thanksgiving. We are beautiful, beloved, and blessed. Let's give thanks and amen. So as we enter a moment of meditation this morning, I invite you to settle yourself into a comfortable posture. Feet flat off the floor if you're comfortable with that. Take a few deep calming breaths to relax and to center. Deep breaths in and out. And as you continue to breathe, I invite you to allow your awareness to move to your immediate environment in this space, in this time, in this moment. And for all the things that you can sense, smell, touch, taste, or hear, or see. Say to yourself, for this, I am grateful. And as you continue to breathe, bring to mind those people in your life to whom you are close your friends, your family, spouses, partners. Just take a minute, bring those into your consciousness and then say to yourself, for these, I am grateful. Next, turn your attention to yourself. You are a unique individual, blessed with imagination, communication, the ability to learn from the past and to plan for the future, to heal from and overcome any pain you may experience. Just breathe that in. And as you breathe out, say to yourself, for this, I am grateful. And 
and finally rest in the realization that life itself is a precious gift. That you've been born into a period of immense prosperity. That you have the gift of health and culture and access to all types of spiritual and truth teachings. To friends and family and fellowship. Take that in. Breathe it in. Allow all these things and these blessings to fill you. And as you breathe out, say to yourself, for these, I am truly grateful. One more deep breath in. And out. For these things and for so much more, we give thanks. And so it is. So we allow it to be. And amen. So we have come to that time in our service where we have an opportunity to demonstrate our gratitude for all our many blessings through the offering of our financial gifts and support to this community we call it Unity of Gainesville. We have several forms of ways to give right up there on the screen. And we have the traditional way of bringing your gifts forward a little bit when Don uh, offers us a song and placing them in the basket on the table up front. If you give electronically and you want to come up and take one of those little hearts and bless it and toss it into the basket, we invite you to do that as well. Please know that every gift is important, very much appreciated, and the energy of your love, your prayers, and financial support carries us forward and helps us to live out our mission and our vision, not only in this place, but beyond as well. So visualizing and holding your gifts to your heart as you're comfortable, please say uh, the blessing with me. Divine love as me blesses and multiplies all that I choose to give and all that I am open to receive. I give in love and receive in abundance. Thank you, God. I am so blessed.
everyone today and Dr. Reverend Danny Spear, the power of now. Yahweh Abba Ima, sweet spirit of grace within at our only place of power, the present moment. As grace is ceaseless divine love, we say yes to grace, as seen in these sacred and abundant ties and gifts. Thank you. We remember to avoid extreme opinions, honor the past, and practice forgiveness as we remember that too much future is a distraction and stressful. Life is now, and I am. We come in thanks and count our blessings at Thanksgiving time. We are truly grateful. We have it all together, and we can remember where it is, right? Happy 90th, Cletus, Angere, the power of now. Thank goodness, no fake IDs here, Ashe. Oh, thank you, Dr. Rick. Always love it when you do the offering. Okay. So before I get started on the announcements, a uh, quick reminder, next week is the first Sunday of Advent. Uh, Dr. Don Necco will be back with us, and Reverend Jeannie Ward will be offering a message on hope. You do not want to miss that. Uh, another quick comment on age. You know, sometimes what happens, we have the best laid plans with our announcements and everything laid out, and stuff always happens, right? So I made another little list. I got to make sure I cross it all off. Uh, I am grateful for my husband who always says before I leave the uh, house in the morning, do you have your list? Do you have your laptop? Do you have this? Do you have that? I have my list. Thank you. Okay. One, two, three. Good. We have an announcement here, which is not on uh, the slides. Next Sunday, the 27th, immediately following church, we are going to be decorating the sanctuary for Christmas. We're going to at least start it. We're going to get as much done as we can. And if you can hang out and help decorate the sanctuary, please do so. And the person you see for that is Darlene, who is working hard in the kitchen right now. So if you don't know who Darlene is, I will point her out to you after service, okay? Next Sunday after church, Christmas decoration, please and thank you. Today, of course, is our Thanksgiving potluck, and I know I have to get through these announcements because I've done this long enough to know that you don't stand between church people and their food. Amen? All right. Wednesday, November the 30th at 6 p.m.-ish on Zoom, I'm going to be leading a four-week Advent study based on Unity's Advent Devotional Guide. Uh, Lynn, do we still have copies? And Lynn is out in the kitchen as well, I'll bet. We, we are out. Okay. Okay. 
Currently, we're out. We're working on getting more. Okay. So, and the Zoom link you're going to use is the exact same Zoom link you use to tune in on Sunday mornings, but we do send that out. Okay. Uh, and uh, gear and letters and membership update. Okay. A lot of you today, when you came in, you received an envelope with our holiday letter and a membership database update form. Okay, we ask you to read that letter. We ask you to fill out that form because that helps us keep your information current with us, okay? Especially if you're a member of Unity of Gainesville, a voting member of Unity of Gainesville, we need this information so we can update our membership uh, database and keep that accurate. We ask that you get that back to us as soon as possible uh, at least by the end of December, okay? So we can have everything ready for our annual congregational meeting in February of 2023. It will be here before you know it. So speaking of that annual congregational meeting, we are going to be electing two board members. Uh, Joe, uh, as we know, is moving away to Ohio and her term is up. Uh, she's going to be still uh, handling the meetings via Zoom, our board meetings. So she's still going to be around till February virtually, okay? And Darlene's term is up as well. We have two positions open. If you are a voting member of Unity of Gainesville and you are interested in applying for the board of directors, the people you see are Lynn, who is out in the kitchen. Terry, would you raise your hand? Terry, all the way in the back is our lovely greeter today. Where's Patricia Bonaparte? There's Patricia, there's Patricia, or you can see me and we will give you the correct information you need to apply. All right, I think that's it. And if that's it, let us all stand as you are comfortable doing so. If you have any questions about anything I just said, see me after service, call the church, check the website. Yes, ma'am. Oh, I completely forgot, I am so sorry because I don't do this that often. Uh, if you are visiting with us for the very first time today and you're comfortable doing so, please raise your hand. We have a visitor's pack for you. Right over here, Terry, thank you. And Terry, we have a young woman on the front row. We don't, we don't make you sing or dance or anything, it's okay. And I apologize, Joe, thank you so much for pointing that out. We never want to ignore our first time guests. All right. Okay. So as you are comfortable doing so, let's have the prayer of protection. The light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. The presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is and all is well.
Okay, so today, as we close the service, I'm going to pray over the food. So if you stay with us, it's prayed over. If you go out or go home, it's prayed over. It's all good, okay? If you're standing here and you're seeing the tables and say, there's not room for me, there's always room for you. We have more tables. We'll find room, and there is food. Please stay and let us pray. We give thanks, and we are grateful for all the many blessings of our lives. We are grateful for those who have come before us, those who will follow us, and we are most grateful for the power of now. We are grateful for the food that we are about to eat, and we pray that it nourishes our bodies. May it remind us of our current blessings, how blessed we truly are, so that we may go out into the world and be a blessing to others as well. Amen. Let's eat. Thank you.